by Virgil Griffith, who is here from Caltech, who is going to you know, Caltech and Santa Fe Institute, whatever else he's affiliated with. And he's going to talk to us about uh, a artificial life project he's been working on called the Minecraft Jar Box. Polyworld. Polyworld. Okay. Uh, Polyworld. So, take it away, Virgil. Okay. Hello, I'm Virgil. Um, Oh, do. Um, in, in short, uh, I'll be talking about um, well, just some work I've been doing for the past two years on on, on, on evolving neural networks instead of an artificial life platform, and uh, and you see like, like, like the cool intelligent stuff emerge out of it. So that's kind of the synopsis, and I'll be showing you um, pretty pictures along the way. So um, I guess we will get on with that. Okay. So yeah. So yeah. Pi world it's like this. Flash. Okay, I'll do a plywood in real quick. Um, for the plywood, well, that's for the first place. Um, in, in short, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. no, um, what plywood is, basically, basically we're, we're throwing neural nets into an ecology and we're laying them with each other. And, uh, and, it, and it, the idea is that uh, since we know intelligence is roughly based on neural nets, if we, if we have neural nets competing with each other in a simply rich environment, we'll get, get something neat out of it. Um, and we have this, and made this, and made this whole research tool uh, all about that. So, um, and the, the hope is that, that we can actually create some like artificial intelligence this way by instead of by by not actually uh, coding AI, but instead uh, evolving it incrementally through, the, through this kind of simulation. Um, and uh, from a pure engineering perspective, you could think of this as instead of spending all your time um, doing doing brain design, you could spend your time doing environment design or world design. And evolution will take care of the rest. So, so yeah. Okay. So it was not, not for open ended. Yeah, we know about that. It's not an really accurate model, really anything. Um, but although, but although it could be done, um, and it could be reasonable. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> okay. So this is basically to tell you um, uh, this is how things work. Um, the critters in play will mate sexually. They have a metabolism. They eat things. And they, and they have a little line, they have a little strip of pixels that is their vision. If you've you ever read Edwin Abbott's Flatland, it's like that. Um, yeah, okay. Um, see, the, uh, the genes for each critter uh, is only talk for their wiring diagram. Like what weights are there, not actually, I'm sorry, what connections are there, not the weights on the connections. The weights on the connections are, all, are done by heavy learning beginning at the baby's birth. Um, so yeah, so that. Oh, and there is no fitness function. There's no cheating. So, I promise you. Um, the, the nice thing about this is that if any sort of crazy solution they come up with, uh, it, 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 it will work. I mean, the, their sole objective is to survive and reproduce. So we're not optimizing in particular. Um, yeah, so they have colors that change. And I'll take a look at these colors in a second. Um, so here, so, so, so here's my simulation. In action. Okay, so these green things are food. Um, they, have walk, they, have, they have to run over them and activate their eat neuron to eat it. If you saw one eat it just there. Um, let's move that. Oh, there we go. Uh, try again. There we go. Uh, the, um, the, the, the things moving around are, are, are critters. Um, you see a lot of them on the edge because that's just really, really easy to do to go along the edge. And um, because they aren't very smart at this point in the simulation. Uh, at the very top, you see the point of view of every single critter. And, uh, and at the bottom right, you see the overhead view and the brown things are barriers they can't cross. And this is just to not make the world trivial for them. If you don't have barriers, well, I mean, well, they just go straight all the time. Um, and they go in circles. So that's very interesting because we got barriers. Um, but in short, uh, you basically see that see they're, they're engaging kind of their purposeful behavior. They're, they're actually moving around, they are moving towards food, and they actually are, are actually eating things. So that's good. Okay, moving on to um, Okay, this is, this is a very quick rundown of the kind of things that are better the genes. You don't really have to know this. Uh, this is just for reference. Um, this is just to, um, we, there are two kinds of genes. There are genes that control for their actual body, like how big they are, how strong they are, how fast they move, etc. And the other ones are for the brains. So here you see how this is basically how the brains, this is how the neural network of the brains is, is genetically specified. Um, in short, they can decide how many input neurons they have uh, for, for for red, green, and blue because they see an RGB, so they can decide to pay more attention to one color than another. Um, and it says uh, how big their brain should be, number of internal groups, and on uh, how excitatory and how inhibitory roughly each group should be. So, but this is not very useful, so I'll show you a picture. Um, so, okay, so here we have a neural group. 
Uh, the green ones are excitatory, red ones are inhibitory. They're, they're multiple ones. They connect to each other. They even connect back sometimes. And they're lots of them. And they can all connect to each other. Nothing weird. Okay. And these, uh, these, these, these are just, just, just regular uh, clock kits. Um, um, neurons. Okay, so this is the internals of the brain. They connect to some output neurons. These output neurons are the seven basic behaviors of the world that are hard coded. And there they are. Um, you can you can move forward, turn left, turn right, eat, um, mate, and fight. Um, light can more like a blink. So the idea is that they can hypothetically communicate with each other. Basically, they can like turn the front of them um, like a bright white color. And the idea is they can like a Morse code or something. Um, and focus, uh, that's just because the, uh, they can be switched between a fisheye lens or a regular lens. That's all that is. Um, and these are the inputs. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, so these are the inputs. Um, the inputs are the RGB of, what, of, the, of, the, of the strip of pixels we're looking at, and their current life, and just a random. Um, the, the, the randoms, they're, they're just for fun to see if they want it. Um, surprisingly enough, they actually kind of like the random. So, you know, um, they neat. Okay, uh, and to show you I'm not lying to you, uh, this is a real plywood brain map, uh, Joey with graph is. Um, at, the, at the very bottom, there is the RGB input, input neurons, and then you see the red and green uh, you, uh, internal nodes, and at the top, in blue, you see the, uh, um, the, be the behavior units. So this makes it exactly the same thing as you did before, but it's, um, but, it's, but it's real. So, no, I'm not Josh and me. Okay. Um, okay, so I'll just show you some, some um, so these are some behavioral samples of just, just uh, of the hard-coded behaviors. And I have to show you that, I'm going to show you some emergent behavior. So I'm going to show you, uh, so what's going to happen here, uh, one of your is going to come up, kill the other, and then eat its corpse. Uh, I, um, oh, sorry, I showed you some of the colors now. Uh, the color of every organism is dependent on its current, on its current um, mood. The redder an organism is, uh, uh, the more it wants to kill you. The bluer it is, uh, the more it wants to mate with you, and, uh, and, 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 the, and the green component is, is really genetic. So the idea that you can like selfish gene with this. So like, so you could have the light green versus the dark greens, something like that. Um, so okay, I'll choose some samples. So it's gonna come up to it. Uh, it eats the critter, and it eats its corpse. Uh, uh, so you saw uh, that clear? Hope so. Okay. Wait, which is the corpse? <laughs> no, it's okay. This is how mating works. Um, the two, the two organisms are, are, are going to come together, and they will have a child, and they, they will expend so much energy making the child that they will die, and the child will then eat their corpses. So, here, so here's one parent. Here's the other parent coming up. They will mate. They die, and the child will eat both their corpses. So. Um, okay. Alright, so, um, the, the, so that was some of the different behaviors. There are more movies, but look, it's kind of short. Um, this is one of the attack, showing you this is actually, we're actually getting somewhere. So what you're going to see is that you're going to, you're going to see a, a, a red, um, an, an angry uh, uh, red polyworldian come up, come up to near a neutral one, and the neutral one will see the red and start running away from it. So, basically, so, so the point of this is that they have, their nets are actually doing something, and they're actually evolutionarily useful. So you see the red one coming, and the other one will turn around to seize the red and run away. Behold. <laughs> okay, so we actually are using useful nets. Um, this, this is another one showing behavior. In short, uh, this, is, this is showing how there, how there are many different strategies. At the very beginning, I showed someone where they're mostly, they're mostly um, they were, they were, uh, each agent was, was kind of individual. Now, now we see this kind of swarming behavior, um, where every single agent is very, very small and very, very tiny, and, um, and they themselves aren't very good at finding food, but the swarm is. And the swarm just kind of, um, if you actually look at their brains, the swarm basically says, hey, hey, just come turn around in circles and follow, green, and follow dark green things. And just so happy that these were dark green. So, and that kind of worked. Um, so, you know, they're just kind of swarm, and the swarm just kind of gradually moves. Shows you pretty pictures. Now I'm going to show you some nice science results. Um, this is showing you some some, some predator prey cycles. Actually, yeah, actually, I'm just going to show you first. Ah, 
know that's not what I wanted. Okay. Well, anyway, okay, this is showing you predator prey cycles between agents and food. So, so in short, if you have food patches and you have like food in it, uh, we can count the number of and this food just grows just all the time. If we count the number of agents uh, in the food patch, uh, with the amount of food in the food patch, we can see kind of a lock of Volterra between foragers and the and the whole, and the food being foraged. In this case, the green is the food and the red is the agents, and you will see the upticks in the in the, in the agents um, immediately follow an uptick in food. And you see this kind of cycle cycle, cycle keeps going. Um, so you know, so, so well, it's kind of nice. I mean, you know, we we, we, have, we have this naturally fall out of the world. Um, this wasn't like intentionally, like, you know, we, we weren't planning for this, it just happened. Okay, moving on. Alright, now, now I'm going to show you some things about the brains. Um, so the main thing to look at is the connection matrix in the, in the bottom right. Uh, that is a random connection matrix. Um, that was just made with Handy MATLAB. And I'm going to show you one, um, it, was, it was from a, a paper I saw a uh, few years ago. It was a slice of a cat visual cortex. Check that out. So here you go. Okay, what we see is kind of not random. That's basically all you can get from that. Now, I'm actually a polyworldian one after after uh, after about after a couple days of, of evolution. Behold. Now, look at the polyworldian one. Um, it's not a cat, but we can definitely see it's not random. It's a whole lot closer closer to a cat than it is random. Um, and this is especially nice because we because all their brains are initially completely random, like they're at the very start of the world. So, evolution get, basically took us. From the from the top connection matrix to the bottom one, so we're actually getting something. And this is very nice. Um, so the random and one is from early in the universe. What? The random one there is, is from early in the universe. Um. The initial condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's, the, it's the initial condition. Okay. Time step one. Um. um so the initial condition of all your pieces that you carry forward. I I I just took a random organism from each one. Like like. Look. Mm -hmm. um, successive every time a critter is born, the weights in their neural net are random. The, con the connection matrix is, is not. The connection matrix is inherited from generation to generation. Um, the weights are always done by head and neck. Um, because there's no way you're getting error signal back. So anyway, okay. Um, you mean, what are you, you refer to the histogram of the connection weights? Is that what you mean? Oh, um, I have a glass of that, but not in this presentation. Um, the answer, well, the, the short answer is no, because this is looking at just raw connections. And this is ignoring weights. So, uh, so, 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 this is looking at just, just, just at genes ignoring any learning. So we see, even if it's ignoring uh, any kind of learning, we see changes. So, nice. Um, and guess what? You can download it. And it's free. Um, so you can do that. And there are lots of other pretty pictures that I didn't show you. So, um, that's pretty much it. So we have a lot tonight, so if any of you have uh, questions for Virgil, you can uh, find him after. Actually, you can ask him now, because i got to switch the computer. Right? Oh, yeah. You can ask him while they're switching the computers. Um, and then this is uh, Jason Kelly from the MIT Biopart class. Oh. Do your green shirts tend to die young? That is, if they have no, if they have random weights. Oh yeah, you know, at the very beginning of the simulation, you should only see the entire population die back. I, I meant after mating, it would seem like this new child is now. Oh, um, yes, um, okay, you, um, we, we actually do, we, um, we were inspired by some of Ralph Metzger's work looking at neural networks, and we actually inject random noise into the network um, for, for like 200 times depth before it's actually born. So, um, so, and this, this, this allows, so when the critter is born, um, it is not, its, it's weights aren't, aren't, aren't completely random, but they've had a random noise thrown into it, so that, you know, they're healthy stable. Is that, is that, I mean, yeah. Now there's, there's both, um, survival of the fittest evolution, but there's also sexual uh, evolution. So have you seen, um, sexual strategy show up, um, in this game? In other words, hmm. is there a Casanova out there? <laughs> Um, as far as I can tell, basically all of them try to make it, make it as much as possible. They aren't very picky. They're all the kids. 
Yeah, no, there is something they can do. They can determine, um, they, is, is genetically specified, what fraction of their own energy they give to their children. So, 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 so you could have to do strategies in that respect. Yeah? Um, no, 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 there, 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 there is no, there's no male and female, they're, they're all, they're all androgynous. But you have, so. but we have seen a Right. That's an interesting idea. I guess what you can do is I um I look at that. <laughs> right. So I did it. Uh, yeah, the last part? Maybe. Um, yeah, no, there's a thing clear though. Both of them to mate. They have to both run over each other, and both of their mate neurons have to be activated. So if they merely run over, that doesn't work. Same thing with food. They can run over food, but their food neuron isn't active. Nope, nothing.